and change my colors with a little trick here dealing with monochromes. Go to View and Wireframe. You see, dealing with monochromes or dealing with bitmaps, these aren't vectors, so it's a little bit tricky to select sometimes, but there's a trick for that in Corel, and I'll show that to you right here. You'll notice that on top here, I've got my white, which is my white highline, but if I hold down my Alt key on my keyboard and click, you can see I'll get down here to my black outline here, and then if I click again, I'll get down to a 10% black, as you can see there. Now, by holding down my Alt key, what I'm doing is actually going through kicking clicking on the top object, then getting the object beneath it, then getting the object beneath that. So I'll start with my white here on the top so that I've got everything selected, and I'll white click and change that to a Pantone Trans White. Now remember, when you're dealing with monochrome, it's reversed. Right click for your foreground, left click for your background, and you want to knock that out. You usually want that to be transparent. Now hold down Alt, click again. I've got a black here. I'll just come up here to my tinted palette, right click, and change that to 100% Pantone Black Sea. I'll hold down Alt again and I'll get what would be the background for this image and I'll come and right click and change that to a white as you can see there. So now I've got these three objects set up and ready to go here. I'll go ahead and group these. Come over here and ungroup. We'll go back to view and enhanced and we'll want to take a look and see what we've got here. We've got a number of different colors. We're going to go ahead and ungroup all of this. You can see we've got our highlight white here on the top even though I can't see it. I know that that's there based on the color information in the status bar. I'll hold down Alt, click again. Now I've got my black. I'll right click and change that to a black. I'll click and go back down and we'll go ahead and right click and change that to a Pantone Trans White. Now, if I wanted to in Simple Steps, I could have just opened up Simple Steps and converted all that, but for the sake of the tutorial, I wanted to go ahead and show you how we can manage these monochrome layers. Next thing I'll do is I'll go ahead and group these because I'm not going to need to uh, have these ungrouped and I want to keep these together while I'm working with them so I can manage them a little bit better. Now these are all set up as spot colors and the next thing I'm going to do is I want to start creating my text. So I'm going to simply go here and type in simple seps, P-L-E-S-E-P-S. -E and I'm going to want to bring that up in size. And we got two L's there. I want to get rid of that. Go ahead and backspace here. Grab myself a font here and what do I want to do that with? And I'll actually do this with... Um, Schmale Gostic MK and that's available free on the internet. Just go ahead and Google that and you'll find that font as a free font. Now I'm going to want to add some effects to this also. I'm going to go ahead and move my skull over here and it looks like I didn't get that all grouped. We want to grab everything here and group this. There we go. Now I've got that all grouped so I'm going to be able to work with that effectively. And I want to go ahead and put some effects on this and the first I'm going to start out with the envelope tool. I'm going to go ahead and get my envelope and I'll go here and just lasso these two middle nodes that I have in the envelope tool and then I'll just left click and arch this up a bit and I can change this a little bit. We won't get exactly the same design as we had in the t-shirt. We're just going to look at how we can lay these out very quickly, very easily and very effectively being able to create high-end designs on the fly for our clients directly in Corel Draw with simple steps and our monochrome art. And I'll go ahead and tilt this just a bit. The next thing I want to do is I'm going to take this and I want to create some effects with this. And What I want to do is I'm going to go ahead and put a to copy this here and then I'm going to put a rather big black outline on it. So I'll go to my properties and I just accidentally closed my properties doc there. Right click, go to properties, we'll bring that back up. Go to my pen tool and I'm going to go down here to 10 millimeters and that's pretty big and I want that to be behind fill, scale with image. I'll go to advanced here and I want to go ahead and round my corners and line caps and select OK. Then I can go ahead and paste this back in I'll right click to fill this with a white, excuse me, left click to fill that with a white, and now I've got something going on here with a white fill, and I actually want to go and give this a red fill. It should probably actually be working in my tinted palette since I'll be working with white, red, and yellow here, but I'll go ahead and give this a Pantone red fill, and we'll go ahead and give this a white outline, as we can see here. And I want to take this white outline and bump it up just a bit, so I'll go down here to, let's say, four millimeters, behind fill, scale with image, and I want to round the corners and end caps on that also. Now looking at this, I can see what I want to do is I want to bring some effects in this. So I'm going to go from a black to a greater white. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and move this here, and I want to get more outline on this so I can bring in a bigger white on this outline of this red. So I'm going to go ahead and change this, and we'll take a look at, let's say, 15 millimeters and I could change this to inches if I wanted but I'll go ahead and select both of these now and hit my C and my E keys that'll center those back up still not quite as much as I want I'm gonna hit control Z and we'll go back I'm gonna change this to 25 millimeters 
and now I'm going to have a nice big black outline. I'm actually going to want to duplicate this and have some offset on this. So I'll just duplicate this text, right click, and then select order to back of page. Then I'll select the text on top of that, select this, hit my C and my E key. And as you can see there, I had that reversed. The last object you select is what Corel is going to center and align. So I want to hit Control Z again. And what I want to do is select my red text, then come down here and select my black text, then hit C and E and then that'll set that'll center correctly and now I can see I've got this other outline down here in the bottom and we'll just tweak this off up here just a bit we just want a little bit of a three-dimensional look down here and I'll bring that right up into there now this outline I can change and I'll bring this to 10 as my white and I actually went to one there but actually I want 10 millimeters and now I've got my white outline there now what I want to do is I'm gonna go ahead and fill this with white and then I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to paste this in again. And now I'm going to go and fill this with red. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put some effects in here from Fashion Factory just to add to this whole texture, hand-drawn style type design. And I can just go ahead and zoom in here. And I'm going to open my Fashion Factory. Go to Advanced Tools here, Fashion Factory. And we'll open that up. And I'm actually going to put a texture in here. So I'll go into my textures and I want to come down to Scraped Out and we've got scraped got a couple of different scrapes in here and I want to use scraped metal scraped and I'm going to apply this to this texture apply this texture to this text so what I'll do is I actually just go ahead and click apply as texture now when you bring these textures in from the fashion factory they're really great they give you excellent control over what's going on with your textures and we'll see that in this little session here we'll go to uh, our interactive tools over here and I want to come down to transparency and I want this to be on my outline as you can see here now because I've got that white in my outline and not on my fill what I'm gonna want is I'm actually gonna want to um, make some changes here in dealing with this now I've got that texture applied to the white here on this particular graphic which actually is the wrong one. I actually applied that to the outline on my red here and that's not where I want my texture so I'm going to go ahead and remove that and where I want my texture actually is on this second text down here with my white outline. So go to my Fashion Factory again and I'll just click apply as transparency and now I've got that effect set up in there. Now what I want to do is actually tweak this. You know one of the great things about Corel Draw most people don't realize when you're dealing with textures you've got far superior tools for ease of use compared to any of the Adobe products period much easier to set these up in Corel Draw than in Adobe Photoshop absolutely without a doubt um, but what I want to do is I want to make some changes here so I'm going to go ahead and click on my transparency tool here and then we'll select this I'm going to click off and I'll click back on the transparency tool that'll bring up my properties bar here for the transparency tool what I want to do is invert this I want to change my ending transparency to zero and my excuse me my starting transparency to zero my ending transparency to 100% now you can see I've got that nice texture set up in there that will offset for my red. And I'm going to take my red here, go ahead and left click in my color palette to get rid of my outline as you can see here. And now if I go ahead down here and I hit C and E, I'll center these up and I've got a nice effect with my outline there of some distress and grunge around my simple steps text. I want to go ahead and bring this left one that I've got down here, this last one in the bottom, I'm just clicking off this and bring this in. I don't want quite as much as I've got there. And actually, I'm going to go ahead and start clicking through here and make some changes on these outlines. Maybe this is more than what I want on these outlines. I'll take a look and see how this looks. And actually, I'm really not kind of heavy. That's a little bit too much. I want to change that. I like to look at the general balance and flow of my design. And artistically speaking, actually looking at, I think eh, it's, it's a really close call, but I think that'll be okay. So actually, I'll go ahead and stop here. I know when I'm doing the tutorials. I'm actually trying to think about what I'm going to say, what I'm doing in Corel Draw, and actually what I'm going to say and do next. So it gets a little tricky at times, but actually I think this will be okay. So we've got our simple steps text set up here. The next thing I want to do is bring this skull in here. I'm just going to go ahead and mirror him over here this way and rotate this a little bit, and we'll change the size of this and start getting everything set up on the page here. And then I'll get a better idea of how that text is going to look when I've got my skull quite a bit bigger. And we'll bring this right here and there's the skull there. Now you can see that when I sent my text to the back of the page the skull is almost in between my text layers. Kind of cool effect. If you want to work with it that way you could or you could right click on this and select 